Welcome to a data cleansing masterclass in Python. My name is Mike West, and I'll be your instructor for this course. If you work in the applied machine learning space, you know that most of the work of a machine learning engineer is data related. This course is focused on all the various components in the process of data preparation. Data preparation is the process of transforming raw data into a format that is more appropriate for modeling. It may be the most important, most time consuming, and yet least discussed area in the predictive modeling machine learning project. Data preparation is relatively straightforward in principle, although there is a suite of high-level classes of techniques, each with a range of different algorithms, and each appropriate for a specific situation with their own hyperparameters, tips, and tricks. This course has been designed to teach you the techniques for data preparation, step-by-step -step with concrete and with executable examples in Python. In the course, you're going to learn the importance of data preparation for predictive modeling and machine learning projects. You're going to learn how to prepare data in a way that avoids data leakage and, in turn, incorrect model evaluation. You're going to learn how to identify and handle problems with messy data, such as outliers and missing values. You're going to learn how to identify and remove irrelevant and redundant input variables with feature selection methods. You're going to learn how to know which feature selection method to choose based on the data types of the variables. You're going to learn how to scale the range of input variables using normalization and standardization techniques. These are only a sample of the things we're going to focus on in this course. Thank you for your interest in Data Cleansing Masterclass in Python, and we'll see you in the course. The course was designed around the major techniques that are already relevant to real-world problems. The goal is to take you straight forward to develop an intuition for the elements you must understand with laser-focused tutorials. The tutorials were designed to focus on how to get results with data preparation methods. Therefore, the tutorials give you both the tools to both rapidly understand and apply each technique and operation. There's a mixture of both tutorial lessons and many projects to introduce you to the methods and give plenty of examples and opportunities to practice them. The course is divided into six parts. The first is a foundation. You're going to discover the importance of data preparation, tour data preparation techniques, and discover the best practices to use in order to avoid data leakage. Part two is data cleaning. You'll discover how to transform messy data into clean data for identifying outliers and identifying and handling missing values with statistical and modeling techniques. Part three is feature selection. You're going to discover statistical and modeling techniques for feature selection and feature importance and how to choose the techniques for using different variable types. Part four is data transformations. You're going to discover how to transform variable types and variable probability distributions with a suite of standard data transformation algorithms. And part five is advanced transformations. You'll discover how to handle some of the trickier aspects of data transformations, such as handling multiple variable types at once, transforming targets, and how to save transforms after you've chosen your final model. The sixth part and the last part is dimensionality reduction. You'll discover how to remove input variables by projecting the data into a lower dimension space with a dimensionality reduction algorithm. Each part targets a specific learning outcome, and so does each tutorial within each part. This acts as a filter to ensure you only are focused on the things you need to know to get specific results without getting bogged down in the math or near infinite number of digressions. The lessons aren't designed to teach you everything you need to know. They were designed to give you an understanding of how to work with them, how to use them, and how to interpret the results in the fastest way. Let's go over some assumptions about the background knowledge you're going to need for this course. This is going to help you get the most out of the course. Firstly, it's going to be helpful if you have some entry-level Python knowledge. Just some basics, mind you, like how it works and the core syntax. Additionally, how to install it. I'm not going to be showing you how to install Python. That should already be done. Beyond that, it's going to be helpful if you have some experience using NumPy, Pandas, and Scikit-Learn, as we're going to be relying on these heavily throughout the course. Some experience handling data and doing some basic data analysis or data manipulation would also be helpful, but it's not required. And lastly, we'll be focused on a very specific part of the machine learning pipeline. So having some familiarity with the foundation machine learning concepts is going to provide you some proper context for the part of the pipeline we're going to be focusing on. Now, it's OK if you don't know them inside and out. Throughout the course, we're going to review many of those machine learning foundations. Data preparation may be one of the most difficult steps in the machine learning process. The reason is that each data set is different and highly specific to your project. Nevertheless, there are enough commonalities across predictive modeling projects that we can define a loose sequence of steps and subtasks that you're likely to perform. This process provides context in which we can consider data preparation required for the project, 
informed by both the definition of the project performed before data preparation and the evaluation of the machine learning models performed afterwards. Each machine learning project is different because the specific data at the core of the project is different. You may be the first person ever to work on a specific modeling problem. That doesn't mean that others haven't worked on similar predictive tasks or perhaps even the same high level task, but you may be the first to use the specific data you have collected. This makes each machine learning project unique. No one can tell you what the best results are going to be or what models to achieve them with. You must establish a baseline of performance as the point of reference to compare all your models, and then you must discover what models to use for a specific data set. Now, you're not alone. The vast literature on applied machine learning that has come before you can inform you as to the techniques to use to robustly evaluate your models and algorithms. Even though your project is unique, the steps on the path to a good or even the best results are generally the same for every project. This is sometimes referred to as the applied machine learning process, the data science process, or, or by an older name as knowledge discovery databases. This process of applied machine learning consists of a sequence of steps, which we're going to walk through in detail in the next lesson. Hello and welcome back. In this lecture, let's talk about the machine learning process or the machine learning pipeline. Machine learning is very process oriented. You follow the same core steps every time you're given a project. The first thing you want to do is source your data. The data has to come from somewhere. In the real world, 99% of applied machine learning is supervised learning. That's according to Andrew Ng. Now, the two most common types of problems are classification and regression. What does sourcing data really mean? Well, it doesn't mean going to the internet and downloading this pretty picture with a data set that's already hand labeled. Labeling means someone came in here and made sure all this was filled in. They put the target variable here. They added the target variable for whether the passenger survived or died. This <laughs> isn't what the real world looks like. So what does the real world look like? Well, Here's a, a relational database called SQL Server. And this interface we're looking at is called SQL Server Management Studio. So here we have some tables and we have one table. Here's the login table for an application. And we're gonna say the data we need is in this test database. So we do a query on the login table and it has the login. We have JLo, Charlie Sheen, Chem K, uh, their user passwords. That doesn't give us much. There's nothing here to model. Well. That's because the information is housed in more than one table. So you're going to need to create some joins. So here's a join on the login table and the orders table. So when we execute that, now we get a little bit more information, don't we? We get the orders by JLo, by Charlie, and by Kim K. We've got quantity, cost. Now we've got some more information. That's not it, right? So we're going to have some other information that we need. So let's move over here and now let's join on another table. And when we join on our third table, personal, we get even more information that we can use to build our model with. Now, this is the most simplistic example I can give you. All the rows you can see are filled in. Now, if we had this data set in the real world, all we would have to do is hand label the target variable, and then we could predict what people are gonna buy. This isn't what it's like in the real world. The real world doesn't even have tables that are this filled in that are this clean, it's a lot more involved. But you do have an idea of why it's important to have serious SQL skills in order to do your job in the real world. So the second part involves wrangling, and that involves massaging that data into a state that's modelable. Now within that wrangle box, there are other things that go on. There is data cleansing, and data cleansing is applying statistical techniques to your data. So at each step in this distilled machine learning process, there are tons of other things you're going to need to do. All right, so we've got our data set and we've wrangled it and we've cleansed it and we've labeled it. Now we're ready to move on to build and tune. And build and tune is the fun part. That's the modeling part. That's when we take our algorithm, we point out our data set and we say, hey, go find some patterns in that data set. Tuning means, okay, we just built a model, but we're not really happy with it. It's not as good as we hoped for. Well, maybe it's because we haven't tuned the right parameters. So parameters are things we pass into the model. So when we pass these things into the model, we're hoping to squeak out or squeeze out better performance. That's the tuning part. Now the last part is production. All this is meaningless to a company if the model isn't live in production, if they aren't seeing some kind of gain from what you built. 
All right, so you have to put it in production. And production can mean a whole lot of things. It could mean building a front end with ASP.NET or with C Sharp or with any number of other languages to call the model, to call the model you built. So you'd build a front end. You would pass in the parameters to the model, which really is the input data. And then the model would make a prediction. And hopefully, if you build and tune your model correctly and you cleanse your data correctly, those predictions would be highly accurate on fresh data. And fresh data is data the model has never seen before. So we've got these four core steps. And I've distilled it into four different parts. Sourcing, wrangle, build, tune, production. And I did that because during an interview, you need simplicity. You need the simplest approach to a given problem. In this lesson, let's answer the question, what is data preparation? On a predictive modeling project, such as classification or regression, raw data typically cannot be used directly. There are reasons for this. For example, machine learning models require the data to be numbers. Some machine learning models impose requirements on the data. Statistical noise and errors in the data may need to be corrected. Complex nonlinear relationships may be used to tease out the data. Therefore, the raw data must be pre-processed prior to being used to fit and evaluate a machine learning model. This step in the predictive modeling project is referred to as data preparation. Although it goes by many other names, such as data wrangling, data cleansing, data pre-processing, and feature engineering. Some of these names may be a better fit for subtasks for the broader data preparation process. We can define data preparation as the transformation of raw data into a form that makes it more suitable for modeling. This is highly specific to your data, to the goals of your project, and to the algorithms that are going to be used to model your data. We're going to talk more about these relationships as we move through the course. Nevertheless, there are common or standard tasks that you may use or explore during the data preparation step in the machine learning project. A few include data cleaning, which is identifying and correcting mistakes or errors in the data. And then there's feature selection, identifying those input variables that are most relevant to the task. Then there are data transforms, changing the scale or distribution of the variables. Then there's feature engineering, deriving new variables from available data. And then lastly, there's dimensionality reduction. And this is creating compact projections of the data. Each of these tasks is a whole field of study with specialized models. We're going to take a closer look at these in Section 3. Data preparation is not performed blindly. In some cases, variables may be encoded or transformed before we can apply a machine learning algorithm to them, such as converting strings to numbers. In other cases, it is less clear. For example, scaling a variable may or may not be useful to the model. It can feel overwhelming given the large number of methods, each of which may have their own configuration and requirements. Nevertheless, the machine learning process steps before and after data preparation can help to inform you on what techniques to consider. All right, in this lesson, let's answer the question, how do we choose our data preparation techniques? As with many other questions of statistics, the answer to which feature engineering methods are best is that it depends. Specifically, it depends on the model being used and the true relationship with the outcomes. On the surface, this seems like a challenging question, but if we look at data preparation in context of the entire project, it becomes a little more straightforward. The steps in a predictive modeling project before and after data preparation and form us of the data preparation that will be required. The step before data preparation involves defining the problem. As part of defining the problem, many of the subtasks may be gather data from the domain problem, discuss the project with subject matter experts, select those variables to be used as inputs and outputs for a predictive model, review the data that's been collected, and then summarize the collected data using statistics. Lastly, visualize that collected data using plots and charts. Information known about the data can be used in selecting and configuring data preparation methods. For example, plots of data may help identify whether a variable has an outlier value or not. This can help in the data cleansing process. It may also provide insight into the probability distribution that underlies the data. This may help determine whether data transforms that change a variable's probability distribution would be appropriate. Statistical methods, such as descriptive statistics, can be used to determine whether scaling operations might be required. Statistical hypothesis tests can be used to determine whether a variable matches a given probability distribution. 